Um, so welcome everybody to the Monday, May 8th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Call the meeting to order. I, um, with everybody's consent, we're going to uh, move the minutes and the warrant stuff down later since it uh, looks like everybody's ready to go. And we can go straight to new business, the presentation by the Public Buildings Committee on the future plans for the Public building Safety Building Edition. You guys want to join us at the table, or because we'll be able to hear you better. Oh, yeah, if you guys can. Okay. Okay. How about you record it? <coughs> I would, because I'm not going to be able to get that. Recording in progress. to speed on uh, public buildings community where we are with the project that we're working on. Um, probably should have done a little sooner, but here we are now. <laughs> um, the creation of the new highway facility and subsequent highway department moves to the, our new field facility Space opened up both in the upstairs of the town offices as well as the old highway garage. This led to discussions on about how to best allocate the use of the old highway garage between fire, police, and ambulance departments. At first, a, a public safety working group was established to make these decisions. After several decision, decisions, it became clear that the town should be creating long-range plans for all public buildings, not just the highway garage. The Public Buildings Committee was established by the Select Board on February 7, 2022, for the following purpose. Conway Public Buildings Committee is responsible for identifying and pri prioritizing current and future needs for existing and proposed town-owned buildings. It will oversee the design, maintenance, and construction of building rehabilitation and new construction. It will present proposals requiring the approval of a town meeting and report progress and problems via the minutes of the community. Is everybody done? We got the Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Marie? Yeah. The Public Buildings Committee decided it's, it made the most sense to add onto the existing structure a new public safety building addition, which would include individual offices for the fire, police, and ambulance departments with additional space for a shower, laundry, and a conference room. The committee reviewed several options for accomplishing this, including building up on top of the old garage, as well as carving out some room in the back of some of the current vehicle bays to create office space. These options were rejected for multiple reasons, including the need to bring the entire old highway garage up to code, the cost of installation and maintenance of an elevator, and the current and future need for more, not less space in each of the vehicle bays. The progress of to date, we have drilled the new well. The need for water had become critical in the building and the select board approved the expenditure of $15,000 in ARPA funds to drill and hook up the new water supply. The previous water supply had come from Owesco and was piped under Route 116, which had been leaking severely and degrading Owesco's own water supply. The 
the structural integrity review of the existing buildings, this review was conducted by a registered engineer to ensure any future work would be feasible and not a waste of funds. The building was found to be structurally sound. The septic and leach fields siting and preliminary design, the current system is shared with the fireman's auxiliary building. The shared system required additional, oh, pardon me, annual inspections with new offices and a laundry the addition will require its own septic and leach field. The survey of the property with the overlay of proposed building addition, this is necessary background information and was needed for Conservation Commission and Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection Review. A notice of intent was filed with the Conservation Commission. The order of conditions was issued on April 25th, 2023. The design and engineering of the proposed attached building, the select board approved and signed a contract with Vreeland Associates for $10,600 on April 3, 2023, using ARPA funds. The project cost estimates to follow short. There is a, um, go ahead. There is a, a new office building layout. It's not a definite final design by any means, but it uh, certainly is a conceptual layout to get in what most everything that we feel we need. And I'll, I'll get a much better picture of this. This was taken with my phone. Yes, yeah, it the, does incorporate one fire bay and one ambulance bay in the <coughs> picture. So yeah, yeah. It shows its connection to the So it's like taller doors, right? Or isn't, wasn't that one of the issues? That's the building one, building, building one building company, company taller yeah. doors. The door, the one door that the highway raised is not a door that, um, let me put it this way, halfway down the building, the door is too big for halfway down the building, so it's going to be used by, that's why we determined the police department would use it so that a, the truck doesn't get pulled in, <laughs> that's too tall for the center of the building. What Eric is referring to is not just the height, but the length, right, for the fire truck. Mm -hmm. And the length is going to be... Well, they, they, the, the fire department will end up with three bays. Three full yeah, length bays. Full right. bays. Right. But we, we still have to modify the fire trucks for the height of the bay. Yes. But not the length right. anymore, right? right. Okay. Right. So that's... Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because your standard length of a uh, fire truck is 30, basically 31 feet. Mm -hmm. National standard length. Um, we had to cut. I had to come back to 25 foot six. That cost us considerable extra money. To do that. Go ahead. Keep reading. The <laughs> 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 under the fun, uh, funding headline, the public buildings committee is asked. Asking town meeting to approve moving $311,000 to the $450,000 in funds saved from the construction of the highway facility to a new public safety building addition fund. Also requested is approval of moving $84,695.07 in funds from the sale of public lands special revenue fund to also be used in the construction of the addition. These funds combined with the $390,635.59 left over in ARPA funds, which the select board had reserved for this purpose, will amount to $786,330.66. This means the town would likely not have to borrow any funds to complete the addition. Current plan is to create new public safety building offices. This will move fire, police, and ambulance out of the upstairs of the town offices, leaving a tax collector, treasurer, accountant, town administrator, and assistant to the town administrator in the downstairs offices. The long range plan to retrofit the town hall with a lift in order to be ADA compliant and create new offices upstairs for the rest of the employees in the town offices. This will leave only storage items in the upstairs basement and in the vaults at the town offices. 
Once the town hall is retrofitted, the town can then decide what to do with the town office building. Any other questions from the select board? That's a wonderful presentation. I thought the key thing, the key thing is that, uh, you know, the no new borrowing and really we're coming to town meeting without a spending request attached to this. So, um, very unorthodox. <laughs> and you know, that the, the, um, the ARPA money that we saved and all those ideas that everybody had to spend it, we just had, we held on to it with a white knuckle death grip. And now we have it to spend. <laughs> and now we have it to spend on on this, which is really good. That's a really good use. And when you when you look to see what our neighboring towns spent theirs on, soccer fields tied up in litigation, maybe permanently, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I think when you also good. look at what our current town highway garage looks like. I think most people who live in this town have not been in there before. And I think we're talking about the old or the new? Well, the one that's like <laughs> right on 116. Yeah, yeah the I old, mean, the like old. The, the old. old. But yeah. there's still like vehicles parked in there. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, I think, um, yeah, I don't think people realize what yes. level of improvement we're talking about. Well, that's why we're planning on having a, an open house. Right. <laughs> 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 Has, I has, think that's a wise idea. Has the highway department <laughs> fully evacuated the old building? Is that is that in the cards soon? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I just haven't had time. I've been trying to work on it, and I, I want to say something though. That three hundred eleven thousand dollars came out of yep. that's coming from what this committee saved, or the highway maintenance building committee saved out of. The money that was funded for that's the highway good. maintenance right. garage. That's a really yeah. good point. And, and um, I mean, there was a lot of hard work that put in there. That yep, absolutely. Uh, I right. mean, yeah. I, I'm I'm finding it hard to see what this town is saying about things in this about the highway department, and it's very frustrating. I mean, frustrating to hear some of the things that I'm hearing. And that I don't get the backing from the town select board on where, where, how we got to where we got to. Yeah, I think I we mean, have to appreciate that the part of the reason that we have this money to spend on this project is because of the work of the highway department. And, and, and not just the highway, the whole everybody. committee. But and, yeah, saving an enormous amount Peter, of money. Peter and Walter's contributions were invaluable, um, Chief. Uh, getting the, the uh, tech kids and keeping on top of that for the length of time that's the time required for spent. that to happen. I'm sorry, uh, Ken spent his whole last summer at the garage yeah. working with the tech school. Yeah, uh, I think that I don't think people understand what went into this project to save that kind of money. And and it's even, very frustrating. And, and even how the number that was authorized, it still came into significant so much less than that. And he, and the number that was authorized was so much less than previous numbers. Um, and that this this you know your committee is just sort of uh, it's the gold star hall of fame of town committees. <laughs> we need you to keep going. And uh, maybe we can um, look at Northfield and do their <laughs> type of <laughs> public safety. <laughs> hey, hey. We're not taking a show on the road. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but there's well, not like I'm just saying, maybe the town needs to save like. the money. <laughs> well, if only those points could be printed. <laughs> no, but I, but I, I, that's a very valid. I mean, I just really wish that people would appreciate like how much, like how important it is for people in the town to be involved in projects like this and to be on committees and to be involved in town politics and. This is where it really shows up is like the amount of money that we can, you know, save or like put into a project like this. And it's because of, you know, people in the town who, you know, put in this effort and work and, you know, volunteer on committees and do this kind of stuff. Absolutely. I mean, if the highway facility committee had not done such an amazing job and saved so much money, there's no way we'd be talking about this project right now. We'd still be paying all kinds of money for, you know, so. I have to tell you that I, I'm, I'm beyond thrilled <laughs> with, <laughs> and incredibly grateful for all the hard work that this committee puts into 
into this, making sure that the town does it incredibly reasonably, perfectly well, but just all common sense and, you know. And our first responders deserve a better building to be in. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and like Bob mentioned, I mean, this new building is going to help the cost of future equipment where we don't have to make as many modifications. So that should also be noted. Yeah. I'm going to uh, say something probably at the town meeting because it will probably come up. <clears throat> but those two, this is the second time I've worked with, with Ron and these other guys on the committee. <clears throat> and I can't tell you how closely Ron, in particular, watches costs. He's always looking for ways to save money. He's always looking for a creative solution to something. I put out a couple of projects, uh, proposals, and he said, well, you know, we could do it cheaper this way. So I don't know that, that, that Ron, in particular, gets the props that he should. And I have a feeling I'll have the opportunity to say this at town hall, at a town meeting, because I know the kind of things that happen at, at town meeting. But um, it's a it's a privilege to work with with Ron on, on, on this committee. I think we and Ron would appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> we all I appreciate to throw working in something with Ron. With Ken, because Ken did so much work, and I think you probably all know, but I have pictures of him on his knees next to a uh, cast iron pipe joint, pouring lead with a student, and Professor Wilmette was right there, had the kids doing it, and it was great for the town, it was great for the kid, and uh, probably was all right for Ken too. <laughs> I know you probably saw the same thing, but we, you know, I live across the river and she lives on the other side of the street. I saw you over there quite a bit. So, okay. yeah, definitely thank you for all your hard work, both you guys. Um, design questions. Just to see this all happen. <laughs> Do you mind if I ask some design questions? Uh, I see the proposed septic area. Where is the leach field? It is a septic area, and that's going to be blocked off, obviously, so people can't drive on top of it. And then, do we have any renderings of what this the final exterior might look like? Okay, not much of a difference. No, the, the phase right now is um, you. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, I can tell you, it's not going to be masonry. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm just wondering as aesthetically what it might look it's, like. I'm going to guess it's probably going to be some kind of wood siding. Or, yeah. Um, I don't know if they'll do metal on that. Probably not. It's going to depend on how the numbers come in. Yeah. I agree it's going to look better than uh, Yeah, I think so. so. I hope so. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Unfortunately, everything's dictated by cost today. Mm -hmm. It's not going to match the library. Yeah. Well, that depends on how much money you want to throw. <laughs> <laughs> For this budget, it will not matter. <laughs> <laughs> we do not have Italian marble sent in. <laughs> This, this is a very popular project from everything that I could tell. It's just, you drive past, everybody's driven past that so many times, just thinking, hmm, glad the state never has condemned that thing. And, um, I know there was a time when that was a serious risk that we, that we were worried about. Well, that was one of the reasons that we yeah. had it as confirmed as structurally sound as yep. well. Yep. Um, and then I think this is a good place to point out that there will be a public forum, uh, again, for the public, giving the same type of presentation, but in situ, right in the, in the building itself. <laughs> That's May 25th. Um, it's, yeah, Thursday, May 25th at 6.30 at the old firehouse. Why is it old? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the firehouse is current. current, current, current fire excuse station. Me, excuse me, current. <laughs> 
Well, okay, thank yeah, you. Not uh, not having to borrow um, town funding just as a testament to your guys' ingenuity and hard work. So, again, well done. Appreciate it. Well, I think the board of selectmen needs timing needs issue. some approval. Our the thing is that you guys have been very gracious to set aside as much money as you possibly can out of the APRA funds to help us get it accomplished. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Thanks, thanks, Bob. That was a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good dry run for the 25th. Okay. Yeah. I, I, do, I do hope town meeting looks favorably upon this. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be there on the 25th as well. What's that? I'll be there on the 25th as well. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Two categories of property tax reductions be established in Conway. Um, so we, I mean, we haven't talked about this. This is just my. I put this on the agenda. This is my it's wording, so yeah. it's not. Yeah. Um, so the the a, a is the senior work off program, and I didn't realize how many towns have this, mm -hmm. and how we're in a, the distinct minority of towns that do not have it. Um, we tried. And, <laughs> I, 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 I heard, I vaguely remember it, mm -hmm. but it, it, at that time it didn't seem to, it didn't seem to, uh, I don't know. I, it, didn't I, it, didn't, yeah, right. it didn't fly. Right. It didn't fly. It didn't fly. And I do, I do remember the person that spoke most against it. Um, and and I, I always wondered about that. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been brought argument? forward three times that I know of. Most recently in 2015, and it was tabled. Yeah. We'll bring it forward again. And and th I mean th th so the 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 argument the, I I remember somebody saying that we don't give handouts. Hmm. And and I thought that was a very unkind, uh, uncharitable way of putting this. And that was the argument uh, against 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 quote uh, against giving <coughs> our senior citizens a chance to work off some of their property. It, um, you know, and, and I I've since seen you know for for instance. Um, I know our Council of Aging is very much in favor of this, and Patricia Lynch wanted to be here, but she couldn't. She's at another meeting. But um, uh, you know that 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 there's a lot of different ways that the state now lets towns um, have a, a third party that that will do. The, you can have a volunteer do your hours if you're unable to do them in some towns. Mm -hmm. um, that that's passed. But uh, I, I I just thought number one. And for, for those of you watching at home, we, the Council of Aging, we're, we're one third over 65 in our town, about. And the Council of Aging, our main provider of services, uh, 
it has a budget of $1,200, the same every year for I don't know how many years in a row with no increase. They do a lot and of work. They do so much with that money. But, um, when, you know, again, when, when this, this year we are now spending $6,000 for, to, 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 for stray dogs and $1,200 for senior citizens. And I just think that, so how can we do something more? And this is just one of those ways that just sort of popped up that, mm -hmm. um, it, it, and also that there's a lot of programs that we could be doing with just a little bit of manpower, people power. Um, to, you know, a, the, the senior check-in, the, the telephone senior check-in every day or something like that. Mm -hmm. Things like that, that volunteers could be doing that as part of their work off. Um, just, uh, there, but there's so many other things about services that we don't provide to seniors that we should provide. Um, just everything from errands to uh, tax help to, you know, be, uh, being able to, uh, a little mini Conway Uber thing, uh, whatever, just you know, all kinds of stuff. And so this would create a ready workforce for something like that. Um, the, the challenge is, since if we're one, you know, to, to, to me, the thing about it is, and I don't know if it's even possible, but there are, there are seniors in our town who are very financially blessed. Um, and I don't have any particular interest in lowering their tax re uh, requirement. But, but um, it, you know, if you don't need it, don't, don't, add, don't, don't ask for it. But, but I don't know if that's even possible. It probably isn't. Um, but no, it isn't. There's yeah. no, there's no income yeah. limitation or anything like that <laughs> qualification on this. And if people are doing work to help the town, right, it's great wherever it comes from. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I think I, I'd like to bring it back for the December meeting. Then I guess for the seniors for sure. And oh, for the December town meeting. Well, the, we're having that's one. Right. We oh, have to right. have one anyway. Okay. Yeah. We can't make it in time for June. Right. Um, right. But. Uh, I thought to begin to, December comes up a lot sooner than you think and everybody's going for the <laughs> summer and it's just a good time just to start talking about this mm -hmm. stuff, I think. So, um, so that's, yeah, and I know the Council of Aging supports it and I know there's so little that we do. Mm -hmm. like, what I don't know is how much it would cost, mm -hmm. how many people would apply, mm -hmm. and um, where we would make up the revenue that we would be losing. Well, we, uh, the cost to the town is negligible. It would be a few hours of supervisory time by the department for whom someone's working. In the senior work off abatement program, uh, it's eligible to people over 60. And for various jobs around town, it, sometimes they are weeding gardens or the different things that Phil mentioned, they are paid so much per hour. And that amount is then credited to their next tax bill, reducing the next tax bill. They do not receive money in hand. Um, so that's the incentive of it. And it's in addition to any personal exemption that someone may already apply, uh, uh, receive. Yeah. You, um, they're credited at, an, credited at an hourly rate that cannot exceed the state's minimum wage, which is $15 at the moment. And although it's not subject to state income tax withholding, it is subject to federal if they still file for federal. So the amount that they earn is still subject to that. Many towns put a limit on the amount that a person can earn. It might be $500, whatever. You think about how many hours at $15 an hour, that's what, 40 out of 32, 33 hours of work that someone could perform in order to earn $500 worth of credit to their bill. Uh, but the town sets that limit. And the town, it, it is paid out of the overlay, basically. That's what I was going to ask. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it comes out of the overlay. The, um, what's been the difficulty in the past is that most departments asked have said I can't think of anything that someone can do who doesn't know how much about our apartment our department or I don't have the time to supervise well maybe with a few months to think about it ahead of time 
jobs could be found. Uh, Laurie and I were talking about it today, and she has a one year, once a year, huge mail stuffing for the street listing and follow up on that. We have three times a year where we have large mailings and someone could help with that. Um, we also have some back filing that someone could help with, with supervision, that type of thing. I don't know what could be done for an outdoor job, um, but you, you presented a very good list um, of possibilities, yeah. So it's a matter of this town accepting the provisions of Chapter 69, Section 5K, which covers the Senior Workoff Program. The town has to accept that at town meeting. And then the select board can go ahead, set the limitation, set the terms of it, and then we can implement it. Yeah. Um, Basically, people in the other towns do it by having a, a sheet that one fills out, saying who they are, where they are, what's their property, so forth. What types of work could they do? Indoor, outdoor, whatever. And then that's matched to a different department um, that may have work available. Um, you automatically think of things like the tax bills, but we no longer mail them out. They're mailed by the printing company. And so that's... That's one that's already taken care of, but other offices, other departments may have things that that they can do. The um, we'll have sticker counting, bag sticker counting. <laughs> no, <laughs> there you go. If we could have somebody verify registration sitting right at the yes. contactor, making sure that there's stickers on the bags. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, you know, sure. There are all that's kinds of all kinds of jobs. <laughs> yes, as you say, phone trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Help oh, phone trees to help. So the um, so the maximum wage allowable would be the fifteen dollars per hour, and that's something that you would set. Uh, I think we'd certainly be glad to see it brought forward again. Good. It's time we've tried to every few years, and it's time. And I, I know there there are several departments. You know, I know open space and forest and trails that regularly have the work the the trail the maintenance and the tr Good. plantings and trimmings mm -hmm. and all that. And you know the the um, my work with the Council of Aging with the Mass in Motion group uh -huh. and getting to learn how other towns are, are offering so many more services than we do, and it's just because we just don't have the budget or the people involved. Right. And a lot of this, um, you know, people can really help each other. And and you know, we, they, they did a survey of Conway seniors, and um, uh, of there was almost. Almost uh, one third uh, report, you know, uh, isolation, social isolation, and, and nobody to call. Nobody if they're in trouble or need help with mm -hmm. anything. And that's just, mm -hmm. you know, and that. So to me, it's it's the th important to, to th address th that. Things like this yep. um, can can address that because so many of us, not myself, but so many of us can actually fix things. Definitely not myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and can help other people fix things. And yeah. so. One thing that the needs to be checked is our liability insurance as far as uh, coverage for this type of work, coverage that the town has for work <coughs> that people are doing as volunteers. Well, and yeah. or for their any injuries they might sustain. Yeah, there any anyone who is on a committee is considered a town employee for that. So we would have to establish a committee for this. Well, no, they work for the town. If they if they work okay. For, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, I'll double check. Okay. Sure. Yeah. If they're working for a committee, they're part of the committee. Mm -hmm. For a board or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So and here's, then, even though this is an old printout, 2000, it is the definitive word mm -hmm. okay, on this program. You'll see where I've, I've made a few changes in amounts of dollars yes. and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I wondered okay. about that with the, the maximum property reduction of 500 per fiscal year. Because yes. The wage rate was $6 an hour. Right, at that time. And then 500 is the exit, so I'm wondering, if, you know, I guess you could talk about it if you want to make it a little bit more. Um, I think 
No? Well, this said that they could earn a maximum of 500. I don't know if that's able to be extended, to be oh, increased. Oh, so that's it. In, that's in, a question that we need to ask um, okay. DLS Law. Okay. Yep. And then the other one was a municipal employment program. And I just, you know, we have, we have these committees that we're unable to fill. We, many of them don't have any stipend at all. Right. Um, and uh, if anybody on a committee is a municipal employee, uh, can, can they get a small reduction in their taxes, in their property taxes for, for, I, for I that? Don't know. that? That would be the same theory as working yes. except it's, except it's Doing town work for, but it, for pay. yeah, I don't know of any program that the state currently has. I haven't found anything on municipal employment program. Uh, this was I got I got it from a list of programs. You did, had, yeah, because I was hunting all over the DOR today to find municipal employment program, you know, and so forth, and couldn't find anything. So if they are doing work for a board, it could come under this. Yeah, the, um, the select board also determines how many positions are open each year, how many positions are made available. In other words, how many times 500 <laughs> or whatever. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. That was, that was the thing I was actually going to mention with the committee work, only because would, would the town then, anyone who was over 60, and volunteering on a committee, would they then be eligible? Because that might up the amount of money right there. Oh, I mean, yes. You'd have to know what limit you have on the overlay to, to, to pay out. Well, right. the overlay is adjusted annually, but right. um, you could suddenly have a situation where some members of a committee are there as unpaid volunteers, and others are there as paid volunteers. Right. And can that be managed gracefully? And if you're already, if you're getting a stipend for your committee work, can you double right. dip with uh, a ta that's tax not. reduction? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah no. uh, there'd be, a, there'd be yeah. a red flag there. Yeah, I would think so. Yes. But then if you can't, then maybe the peop some of the people that just volunteer for the tax reduction actually do better than the committee members that can't. Well, it could be, but I'm, I'm just saying that, especially given the, the demographics of Conway, and the number of committee volunteer committee members we have who are probably up for sixty. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that, that could be quite a, a hefty bill. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Well, that's why the that board there. has to put a limit for that. Yeah. For each fiscal yeah. year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You may say we're going into it for our first year. Therefore, we will say we have ten or fifteen positions, and therefore our, our overlay liability will be a maximum of seventy-five hundred dollars. And then you have to figure out how you determine. Who gets those ten or fifteen? If you have exactly. Mind, so. yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And talk to talk to the different boards and different departments. Yeah. I mean, you know, Adam, do you have anything that you know offhand that somebody could give you a hand with? Uh, Jan could be asked, and uh, things like that, and the. Highway and <coughs> public safety offices go to. Yeah. Yeah, and the liability may may depend upon, for instance, I, when you said highway, I'm thinking, oh, well, we better check because somebody doing highway work yeah. is no, vastly different um, than doing office work. Oh, right. You know, right. Over 60 doing. Yeah. Yes. Volunteering to do highway work. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. I know that in, in Sunderland, uh, folks took care of the garden in front of the town hall. Mm -hmm. under the aegis of the highway department. Yeah, yeah. And that was the supervisory board who signed off on it. But they get in, they trimmed, they, they weeded and so forth and kept it really very fine looking. Um, we have our various little parks and all. Uh, do we, if we wanted to do more with them, like the garden club used to do. And the town cemeteries. The town cemeteries? <coughs> yeah. So. Their mm -hmm. thoughts? Stuff to think about. But I'm glad that you support it, though. Thanks. As yes, you know. absolutely. Uh, I think we always have, and but it's been a matter of uh, interest from other departments. But maybe with a few months run up here, time, 
we could yeah. generate a bit more enthusiasm exactly for it. exactly that was the feeling of the people that were in favor of the, the last time around that they didn't put enough effort into getting votes for it ahead of time that they expected everybody to welcome it at town meeting and they weren't really they were really shocked to hear the the the, the comments from mm -hmm. some people that yeah like a topic for the currents perhaps yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah who knows but well, i'm uh, generally all in favor of anything that takes conway more livable for people who come here for many yes, years and want to stay here more attractive for people who want to come here and mm -hmm. raise children here so mm -hmm. <laughs> this seems like a yeah yeah a no-brainer Good. Good. Well, you have the basics. Um, we're glad to research any other questions and yeah. Yeah, so we get warrant language and get all that mm -hmm. stuff and make that happen. Were you going to check with the LS to see if it can go above 500? Yes, I will. Not that we need to necessarily, but I'm just thinking. I was just seeing since 2000 to 2023, 500 is. Not the same kind of right. Well, same kind of increase that was in 2000. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes. No, it may be that they have increased it. Although I did not see anything about that today in my research, but we'll double check. And it may be that as a start, that's a good place to start. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Got the rest of the new business the discussion on loose trash at the transfer station. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping some of the transfer station attendants would be here. Oh, well, they, they yeah, yeah this, this was just they had actually asked me, and they're right, that you know, we really need to know when stuff is going in the hopper. What, yeah. what do you define as loose trash? So I did ask Janet today, and her I answer was any household trash, um, you know, that is normally thrown away in a garbage can inside. However, Individual items, it doesn't cover individual items like a mop or something that you're throwing. Away. Well, just because a mop sticks out of a trash can. Can't so. fit in a bag. Yeah, so, so like, what, yeah, so yeah. that was my, I mean, yeah. and, and for me, I was like, I have no idea. I want to know what the transfer station attendants feel like would be a reasonable decision in that moment. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, they want guidance from us, but I feel like I, we can't give them that guidance without knowing, like, what their. You know, like well, I was what actually do, you do when you show up at the mop. Yeah, I was actually going by guidance from Jan because she's the one who deals with the vendor, who are, are the ones who are telling us that we can't lose trash. So, mm -hmm. you know, but it still goes, but it's but it's going in there now. I mean, people dump loose trash in there now. Right, and we we're not supposed to be right. doing that. <laughs> so what? So so what happens when like? So the so the, the problem. But it all goes in the compact. Yeah. So the problem is. So how do they do? What do yeah, they do? and this is what's been happening, which I was not aware of until this came up with Jan at, at your transfer station, public forums. But so when the the guy from waste management pulls the compactor away. There's all the loose trash is sitting there. He has to clean it up, which is, you know, number one, not fair to him. Number two, it's a hazard for the worker because you don't know what's kind of loose in right. there. And then when you dump it at a transfer station, if there's loose trash, you know, oh, plus litter. Springfield doesn't allow it. Yeah, none of them yeah, allow it because it blows all over the place. But it's but you throw a bag in the compactor. Yep. And it all gets compacted, so those bags like burst apart. Like how do how they don't do you burst apart that much? In all honesty, they so really don't. so they can actually identify like what is loose trash and what is not. You've never used a Glad Flex bag, have you? I <laughs> I have used every single kind of trash bag, and I'm like I don't understand how like yeah. when uh, I've seen stuff go in that compactor. I'm like I don't like how when it comes out the other end. I don't know how you determine like what's loose trash and what's not. The number of times bags just broke from my kitchen door yeah, in my car. I, I just can't <laughs> believe it. I had yeah. that happen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think there's that just brings up a weird question of like the thin line between now what is considered loose trash or bulky waste right yeah like a mop that's mm -hmm. loose trash but a vacuum yeah it's bulky waste and or scrap metal or, yeah 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 <laughs> and and really anything that fits in a contractor bag which is not going to break open 
you know, so that's the so other. So you snap, if it's a wooden mop, you snap the handle in half and you stick that's it in a contract. But there's a, there, and if it's metal, it goes in the scrap metal. There's a fair number of people in town, though, that just don't do bad. They live a trash right. bag free right. lifestyle. Right. Yeah, that's why I think we should have, um, uh, you know, uh, an area up there where people can put like, right. bags that, yeah, like a, a what do we say? Like um, Aldi, except for bags. Bags. It's like reverse yeah. Aldi. Or, right. Well, or I mean, but I mean, I think it really comes down to like, like ultimately, it's going to be the tr the transportation attendants who are having to deal with this. So I want to know from them, like, what do they think? I mean, if they if they know that they have to deal with loose trash, like, what is going to be the, the least <coughs> confrontational situation with that? Like, if someone comes up and has like an entire, you know, whatever gallon, what I would have. I don't know, giant mm. canister of oh, they have those barrels, yeah. Like a bear, like you know. So like, yeah. what, like, what do they want us to tell them to say? You do know? you want to have I mean, them come in to your meeting? So uh, I just, I mean, I don't, I don't want to make any decision. I mean, because really, what it comes down to is like they're the ones who they're on the front lines. So what is not going to make their job? Miserable. Like, I know three of them I've talked to say they do not want loose trash. They don't, okay, <coughs> don't want loose trash. Okay, so then what if well, loose trash comes in? What's the answer? Like, Seamus is on saying? the line. He might have a, 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 an attendant that he's looking after right now. That's one of, that's <laughs> one of the three I talked to. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think they good. like loose trash either because it brings the animals in. For right, so I'm, I'm like, I find saying like no loose trash, but there is going to be a situation where people come in with loose trash and then what do the attendants say and how, like, how much more difficult does that make their job to have to you know, deal with people? Well, I, I can certainly start up again, Chris, the, the thing I was doing with the feed bags and I can yeah. purchase for the town another 55 gallon toter or two. The reason I stopped the program was because people had trash in it and <laughs> left pellets. Well, but I if think people are using them for trash bags, it doesn't matter. It might have been Z that brought it up. Yeah. <clears throat> but, or no, actually it was Jan, Jan was saying that if a bags already exist, right? you know, someone like Z who doesn't want to use bags, as long as it already exists and he's not right. purchasing or Deve right, you know. Right. So, but is but, but then. Do you want to say? Yeah. <laughs> right. So but does he have to come to the dump and get like you yeah, know, you reusable bags, bags that he takes home? Yeah. He's yeah. already going to be at the dump. But if then. right, I, <laughs> <laughs> but if, but if people show up and they have loose trash, like what do the attendants do in that moment? Do they say like There's okay, some bags over there? Right. Okay. Dump it in this bag. We're going to bag it. But then I'd like take some to bags with you. Chart, but. But then they use a sticker, right? Then how do you charge them for that? Or maybe there's a grace period, like this is the first year. That's what I was gonna say. I think with these things, we're gonna need to give a certain amount of grace periods because it does take a while for people right, to so. adjust. And especially if people, like somebody who's not coming up that often, it may be a month or two before they even kind of understand that something's changing. So that's what I really live here. Hey, hey, hey. No, <laughs> they're not here. I think those guys have enough. There's, no, I mean, there, because there's, some there people senior, have There are seniors yeah, that no, go know. once yeah. every other month yeah. and just yeah. with, with one little bag. But those are the ones that we're like doing the outreach to. So, you know, like, those are the ones that we're... We did get a request. I'm not worried about those people. Um, I did get an email request that somebody, I think they were saying they had five gallon bags they use. And could we set a limit, you know, so up to... I mean, what's up? No, uh, no. And I, I, look, here's the yeah, thing. It's like trash. good for them, but they should. They they're still gonna have that. All that means is that they're gonna have plenty of stickers, right? <laughs> well, right. No, 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 no. But what they were asking is if they could consolidate them. Uh, so in other words, I guess my question to you is, which I'm assuming is the case, but I don't like to assume. So if you have up to 33, 35 gallon bag, whatever's inside there, if it's like five of those little bags yeah. that's still one sticker exactly yeah so i can just say we can go up to the gallon limit you can well, go up to here's yeah. the thing also if somebody comes with a 10 gallon bag and who knows where those exist that's still one sticker it's up to up to yeah yeah absolutely yeah and you could save all of your little tiny 10 gallon bags and fill a giant con you could have yeah. like 50 right. of your tiny bags in one contractor bag and use three stickers and I typically go once a month with a contractor bag and it's half full. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing. It's I go like once every six weeks and it's all recycling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, 
So yeah, I'm happy to, to, to chat with Jeff and he's gonna be meeting actually with the, the transfer station attendants on Thursday. So yeah. I'll just have them. I mean, I forward I just, any I, ideas for how to make their life easier. For right, exactly. I just want to defer to the to, to the to the our employees who are on the front yeah. lines, who are the ones who have to deal with any policy change that we make. So right. I want to make it yeah. most um, or the least difficult yeah. for them. It's never going to be comfortable, I'm sure. But yeah, but I'm happy to have them buy you know a big 95 gallon toter and have people be able to donate their old feed bags yep. like they were doing, that and then be great. Great. people can take them and you know. Yeah. yeah. Right. So um, next is a report on the establishment of the working group under the Mass in Motion program. You might remember like a month ago when people from FERCOG were here that Rachel Stoller and Nate yes. Ryan and. Um, since then, I did start the working group up we, um, um, with with uh, a board of health member and uh, a, count, a couple of council agent people and um, planning board and library guy. And but it's it's a uh, and we're <coughs> having another meeting tomorrow morning at nine o'clock where we may vote on spent. So they did they they they're writing us a check for four thousand three hundred and eighty dollars or something. For that we have to spend by June thirtieth, and then another check, and that amount will be deposited for us on July first. Um, and part of that is that some of the things that we're doing require people to do it, uh, and that's why, like, getting the senior work off program is what is it another way to create that, like a critical mass of volunteers, because when when they're one third of your town and the things that you're thinking about doing, like. You know, um, taking them around places, or uh, you know, um, you know, the, uh, calling like I, I like that idea of calling them, calling the people that are okay being called like at once a day in the morning. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. I thought that's a brilliant idea, and just considering the number of people that responded that they're socially isolated, I thought that was wonderful. Um, I think I can make all my kids do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll make everything. I mean, but so, so I mean, if so, if it's one third of a people and there's seventeen hundred people, so that's five hundred, whatever. That's five hundred people a week or something like that. So, uh, you know, but that just shows how the need is there, and I can't believe we're only spending twelve hundred dollars a year for those people. It's just, it's wrong. It's really wrong. So I'd like to make that a priority to sort of bump that up too. But, um, but if we can just keep getting grants, and that's the other thing, like maybe use some of that money to like hire a grant writer because there's so many grants for that this area mm -hmm. and like we don't so for instance that one of the grants that's coming down is uh, senior technology for seniors and it the grant includes it's a huge it's a, the just Massachusetts alone is a multi, is a billion dollar grant because mm -hmm. the, the amount of federal money that came in on this um, and the it includes all, uh, you know, money for devices money for instruction um, uh, money for software, money for apps, like all kinds of things like that. Netflix and subscriptions. I, 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 <laughs> um, and, and what happened is because you know we're not really in a position to write our own grants for this yet. Um, LifePath is doing a, a a grant for all the small towns that don't that aren't writing it their mm -hmm. own, but they're basically going to be providing instruction and not devices. And I I, I personally know of one senior couple that doesn't have a working computer and um, it'd be really nice if we could get them one like it's stuff like that that just drives me nuts that it's just but how can you really function in the world without a working computer right now like what's you know it's it's pretty it's pretty shocking and so the the program that would give them one we're not going to be accessing one for them through that program because we don't have it in us to do that yet and it's things like that that I'd like to do something about it. so. Um, yeah, so so. Yeah, that could be on this list. The work of Bateman. Exactly, exactly. They all thought that idea is great, and they all were sharing the stories of how it went down in flames in the past. That <laughs> man, it was some ugly, some ugly town meetings back then, um, or at least their memories of it are. Um, New era. Yes. Um, so that's. 
that's that, and it's, it kind of dovetailed in with the senior work on program request. That's kind of why it all came up because mm -hmm. I was trying to figure this stuff out. Good idea. Um, well, yeah. I do want to recognize that, like the council on aging, is like it's, it's ever since I've lived in this town, like <laughs> that has been like a core group of people who've been involved in town politics and business, and I really appreciate that. And that's a good model for you know people of my generation, and I hope to continue to support their work. And I'm just beginning to find out how much they really do. How many how many meetings they go to? Because you're about to be a senior citizen. Thank you. Unvarnished truth. Here I come. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Um, so uh, let's see what else. Well, we can vote to approve the minutes of May first. We haven't done that yet. Oh, yeah. I reviewed them. They were great. I make a motion to approve minutes of May 1st. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And we have three warrants. There were counts payable warrant. It's $57,820.47. Payroll warrant, $114,653.67. Payroll deduction warrant, $28,499.93. Okay. I move to approve the warrants. I'll, se go ahead. I'll second. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. It's unanimous too. Um, meetings attended by select board members. Anybody? None. Mm -hmm. Erica? Not this must be. No. Well, the aforementioned Mass in Motion program. <laughs> um, seems like there's a. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> public comments, none. Unfinished business, none. Items anticipated 48 hours, not anticipated 48 hours. None. Town administrator. Read it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Very big spin busy. Yes. <laughs> As always. Yes. It's um, online. Would you get that OSHA certificate? <laughs> I, I don't think I get a certificate. <laughs> Actually, Jan took it upon herself because they didn't have a training for transfer station people. So I know what that was. That's they so have just done an amazing job. But yeah, so my final one is, you know, and I'm going to be like, then they're going to have this whole binder for me that, you know, I mean, they've done amazing work. It really is. It really is. So I'm thankful to be part of that district. Good. Um, ever source poll hearing request? Yes. So that actually went to Lori, who um, uh, forwarded it to me for the board. Um, this is actually one he had asked for like, a year ago. And it's kind of, anyway, so there, it looks like this, so they do have the request. We just have to set the hearing date. Um, and this came, I would have had it on the agenda, but it came in after we posted. So I would suggest May 30th, which is the day after Memorial Day, um, only because the 15th, we have the tree hearing continuance, and then on the 22nd, it's select board and pre-town. Right. So I figured the sooner, soonest we could have a, another hearing it would probably be. And the 29th, I guess, is mem uh, Memorial Day, so the 30th, Tuesday the 30th, would be a suggestion. Because then the following one, the 5th, is going to be the yeah, whole, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you've got a lot on the 5th, and then the following one after that would be the 20th, which is, you know, Tuesday because of Juneteenth, so. <laughs> <laughs> the 5th is after? After, after town meeting. And the election is on the 8th? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I was I was also going to suggest that we have together for you the committee appointments list for Tuesday the thirtieth as well. All right. Okay. So our next meeting is May fifteenth. Well, did you want to set that as the hearing date because Lori yeah. needs to know because yes, set it as okay. yes. 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 May thirtieth. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I don't know if you could hear that or not, Lori, but <coughs> that's just the to like, just to remind, I will not be here for that meeting. I'm going to be in Phoenix on May thirtieth. Yeah. Yes. Or May no no I'm sorry fifteenth. On the fifteenth. Yes, yeah, upcoming. Meeting. Oh, next week. Next week. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Are you going to have the hearing during your normal meeting or are you going to start a little bit early? 
during the normal meeting. Start at six. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Is that okay, Lori? Does that work? I didn't hear his answer. Oh yes, <laughs> we're, we'll incorporate oh. it into the meeting at six o'clock. Yeah. Okay. We'll just do it first. That's all. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I think they did. They did. Last time. Yeah. The time before that, yeah. they did. Yeah, yeah, there was a time. Yeah, they showed up for the Manning one, which was the last that's, one. Yeah, that's right. But I know I was at one before, but they didn't. There was no that. Okay. So, with that, okay. motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See you at the 15th. Okay.